Hello. I'm out here in the shop, just tinkering. Finally got to relax a little bit and decided I'm bored. Let's go make something. So I've been working on this. This is my die filer I've been working on forever. As you can notice, it's come quite a long ways. The shaft in here, I'm going to take and use a uh, half inch some drill rod. But what I'm going to do is uh, cut some threads on here for half inch fine thread, which let me get dig in here. There. The compression flare fittings here. That thread is quarter by twenty. And there's a forty-five degree angle inside of there. I don't know if you can see it. But when you tighten it down, it that 45 sandwiches everything together. What I'll do is I'll cut the threads on here on the end and draw an eighth inch hole right down through the center of here. And then I'll take a saw and split it four ways so that it, when you tighten this down, I'll take a put a 45 on here also. So when this is tightened down, it'll sandwich it together to hold the needle files. Um, yeah, I've got the holes already drilled out and everything mounted here. I got to take and bore out these holes for the bearings and stuff here. Yeah, as you see, the holder is just sitting there. Um, got everything drilled, but I'll take and drill those out and ream them to the size. And I gotta make some bearings for the thing. So, let me grab my book here and I'll be back. Okay, I just got the book. This is my book of pretty much every alloy known to man. This thing took a few years of putting stuff together from stuff like Machinery's Handbook and everything else. It's got all the melting points of everything but anyways right here C932 I'll zoom in here yeah C932 it says 83% copper 6.3% tin which I've seen 7% you know, lead and then three percent zinc I've seen most of them say equal amounts on lead and tin that seems to be a good one um, I was trying to figure out a way to get lead and tin to roll easily and it occurred to me uh, 932 bearings and stuff bearings and bushings so that's when I looked it up that's the best one for stuff I'm trying to do okay I was trying to figure out a good source of lead and tin and right amounts well 50-50 mix lead and tin mix so I've got a bunch of old solder. You find these on in old toolboxes and stuff like that when people just throw them away. The only thing is, the zinc was having trouble trying to find pure zinc. I have the Zamic, which is no good for this because it has aluminum in it. And I was thinking about it, thinking about it, I could not think of anywhere to go to find it. And it finally occurred to me. After talking with Paul from Paul's Garage, pennies. Anything after 1982, they're mainly just zinc inside with a thin coating of copper, which we're making bronze out of it. It's not going to do anything. 
Hey, before anybody comments and complains, it's not illegal to do it. If you take the whole thing is if you take and make it worth more than it's actually worth for coin value, then it's illegal. Like if you take a dollar bill, erase all the ink off it and put 20 on it, that's illegal. This, just destroying the stuff, that's not illegal. Otherwise, the penny pinching machines that rolls the stamp on, those wouldn't be allowed. But, yeah, high-lidded tin bronze. So, we got that. It, it melts at around 1,570 degrees Fahrenheit for general. All the way up to about 1,700. So, it's about the same temperature as just simple brass. Um, I usually get my copper out of old motors or usually I get them from these microwave oven transformers. The only thing is you gotta wa watch the primary here. Sometimes they're made of aluminum rather than copper. A lot of them I find is made out of copper but sometimes you'll run into some aluminum ones too. Just scrape the coating off and you'll be able to tell. But this old block here for the secondary is all copper. If you can find the copper one for this primary, cut it all off with a hacksaw and knock it through and you got a ton of copper. So that's a good source of copper. I'll be using that and I got a bunch of old tubing and stuff that's just been trashed. So, I'll take and get that all put together, weighed out, and we'll get it all into, stuffed in a crucible and ready to go. Also, I gotta get the bolts for the thing. Or some attach it in because it's not attached yet. I just got short bolts stuck in here to hold the cap on. But yeah, got the gland nut and everything attached into both of these with packing in them, and they do hold a seal pretty good. Um, I'll be casting out enough bearing bronze to make some sleeves, some bushings for this, and for the die filer. So, I think that's all I've got. Um, okay, I'll take a stuff everything in the crucible after I get everything measured out, and yeah, we'll come back in probably two days and get little furnace fired up because it doesn't need the big one. I right, see you then. Okay, I finally got this thing running. I forgot when I tore the burner apart to clean it last year, I forgot to leave the gap in it uh, for the Venturi to work. This booger is getting hot. I can't even see in it. I opened the thing up and it's too bright to even see. So, at least we got it running. There's the two molds. I just pack some PVC pipe into some sand and I'll pour it down through that and that's it. It'll create rod for me. And I'll come back when it's ready to start adding the lead, tin, and zinc.
supposed to rain, but it's starting to spit rain, so I'm calling it. I think I got it hot enough to center the lining inside. It's got a little bit of oil soaked in the lining. So I think it's good. Uh, I think I'm going to call it. We'll come back when the bronze is cooled enough to see how much I got. Hopefully enough for at least one bearing. Okay. See you then. Okay, I'm in the shop now. Or the old casting shed. I'm just going to handheld on this one. It's yeah. It's kind of dark in here, anyhow. Hopefully you can see more than I can. It looks like a little bit of bronze. I'll get it cleaned up and see what we got. It's getting really dark out and can't really see much right now. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I hit it on the wire wheel to see what it looked like. It looks like enough for the bearings for the die filer for most of it anyways. So, I'd still say that's a success. Um, I got another crucible and everything full of copper and everything measured out for another batch tomorrow if it doesn't rain. Which, evidently the weatherman doesn't know what he's talking about anymore. So, yeah. We got enough bearing bronze for probably this part here and this part. And then the scraps I'll melt back down and make more rod for this one because it's a lot of extra waste. Okay, I think I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See ya.